very happy to have this opportunity to come to the Philippines. Uh, this is the first time for me to be in this part of the world. Although I went to Japan, China, Vietnam, uh, Singapore, Thailand, but this is really the first time for me to come to uh, the Philippines. And I'm quite grateful to all the professors uh, who are present here and to all the um, centers, uh, departments uh, that cooperated in order to bring me to your beautiful uh, campus. I would like also to emphasize that I'm also, in fact, my home university is Cairo University, but I teach at the American University in Cairo um, as well. Um, um, I would like also to say that, that in fact, uh, my talk is not of uh, a disinterested academic, uh, because uh, I do belong to some of the uh, new social movements in Egypt. Um, I was one of the founders of Kifai, I talk about it. I'm a member of uh, a movement that calls for the autonomy of the university. And I'm also a member of the uh, Egyptian Association for Change, which is uh, trying to uh, promote uh, political change in Egypt at present. Uh, and uh, as for the old social uh, movement, the Muslim Brothers, uh, I know almost all the leaders, and uh, I'm in touch uh, with them. Uh, and as far as the Tahrir experience is concerned, uh, I went to Tahrir several times, and you know I took part in marches towards Tahrir. I could not spend the night in Tahrir because, you know, um, as you know, three days after the start of the revolution, there was a complete breakdown of security forces in the country, and people took it upon themselves to ensure security. So I could not keep my wife alone at home. So for this reason, I could not spend the night at the Tahrir. But you know, I used to go there to you know, like, uh, spend. <coughs> So my talk is not that of a disinterested academic. You could say that <coughs> I was a participant observer in these um, events. Um, my talk today is about um, social movements and democracy. And, um, I talk. Um, I start my talk by, you know, um, inquiring about you know which way to tell the story of the Egyptian revolution. And I make a distinction between uh, old and new uh, social movements. Uh, and those of you who study social movements. Uh, are aware of this distinction. And I talk about old and new social movements in Egypt. I'll describe the issues of agreement and disagreement among these uh, types of uh, social movements. And then I'll describe the situation at present uh, in order to uh, find out who holds the key for the future of Egypt and what are the implications of all this for democracy in Egypt. Now, um, of course, there are many ways of telling the story of the uh, January Revolution in Egypt, uh, but uh, there are also um, uh, different ways of describing what happened in Egypt. For some people, it was a revolution. For others, it was a military coup d'état. Um, for a third group, they consider what happened in January uh, 2011 as an uprising, but not a revolution. I consider it an unfinished revolution. You know, and the first phase of the revolution was the removal of uh, Hosni Mubarak, but on the anniversary of the revolution, on the 25th of January, the same groups that called for the revolution on the 25th of January 2011 are planning a big mobilization at the Tahrir Square in order to ask for the removal of the military council, which is running the country at present, is called the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, and they would like an immediate end to a military rule, and in fact they are opposed by the old social movement. So what will happen on, um, I think, uh, Wednesday of uh, next week uh, would be uh, detrimental for the future of the revolution in Egypt. Uh, the uh, goals of the revolution have not been attained, but what is new is that there are groups of people who insist that the goals of the revolution must be attained. And for this reason, I consider what happened to be an unfinished revolution. So the first point is that you know there is no agreement among scholars in describing what happened. The second is again is how to you know um, describe what happened, no matter how we disagree um, in uh, terming it. And you know, I would choose for this morning to talk about it as you know the story of two types of social movement. Uh, you know, the novel of um, Charles Dickens, uh, the story of two cities. So here we are talking about the story of two types of uh, social uh, movement. Now, 
uh, why I make the distinction between two types of social movements. Uh, I'm sure you understand that the, the term social movement uh, applied first uh, to um, certain movements which were known in, uh, of course, in the beginning, you know, when the term was coined, uh, uh, certain movements which were known in uh, Europe and later in the United States. The historical type of social movements are, you know, uh, broad, you know, groups of people who are inspired by certain ideal and these movements are polyclass in nature, they include people of different social classes, but they are guided by uh, one uh, goal, uh, one ideal, and it's this ideal which gives the movement unity, the movement is made up of organizations, political parties, and individuals who don't belong to political parties or organizations, but they are inspired by this um, ideal. And, you know, this idea calls for, you know, <coughs> complete transformation of uh, society. This is, you know, the old type of social movements. This would apply to socialist workers, mo socialist movements in Europe. This would apply to the Catholic movement um, in Europe also. This would apply to the civil rights movement um, in uh, the U.S. Uh, but <coughs> the new type of social movements, uh, you know, uh, of course, they are recent the information, uh, but they are um, less known for the adoption of a certain ideology. They are focusing on, you know, uh, specific issues uh, such as, you know, human rights, uh, disarmament, you know, protection of the environment, uh, women rights, uh, etc. Uh, mostly they are not polyclass in opposition. They are made up, uh, I don't know, mostly of, you know, people who belong to the same social class, uh, mostly uh, middle class uh, people. Uh, um, of course, uh, China and uh, Philippines and Brazil have known, uh, you know, this type of social movements. Uh, um, in uh, Brazil, the movement of occupation of the land, you know, this is, you know, a movement that was limited to the peasants that was uh, uh, spread throughout the country. China has known, you know, peasant rebellions, you know, every now and then. Um, but, um, and at present, uh, there are, you know, types of the new social movements. Uh, in many countries of uh, the South. Now, uh, why do I um, uh, make this distinction? Because I think it's very important in order to understand, you know, the kind of um, issues uh, that are being debated in Egypt and uh, also the relation between these two types of social movements uh, would determine uh, the future of uh, Egypt and the future of the uh, revolution. Uh, who are uh, the people who are identified with these two types of social movements in Egypt. Um, the old social movement, you know, I use this in order to describe the Islamist movement in Egypt. And um, I use the term new social movement in order to describe the new groups that were quite active in calling for the revolution. You could say that the revolution was initiated, you know, just to, you know, uh, describe, you know, the dilemma of Egypt. You know, one could say that the revolution was initiated by the new social movements uh, and was won by the old social movements. Uh, you know, the uh, new social movements uh, of uh, human rights activists, um, uh, people who call for the autonomy of the university, people who call for um, uh, uh, respect for you know minority rights uh, and the Facebook groups. Uh, those people, you know, fought for the revolution, and in fact, they are the ones who really made the revolution. But the revolution was won, uh, not by these groups. These groups, you know, we had elections, uh, which ended uh, last week, uh, and the elections were won massively by the old social movements. Uh, and the new groups are quite marginalized in the new legislature, which is going to draft the constitution, and probably also uh, members of this legislature you know, two-thirds of whom belong to the old social uh, movements that uh, are going to form the government. So this is the dilemma, you know. There is, you know, a certain saying uh, that, you know, revolutions uh, are uh, planned by uh, malicious people, are, you know, carried out by courageous people, uh, and um, are won by wicked people. So, you know, um, this is the dilemma of the revolution, that those who start the revolution are not the ones who, you know, gave up. And this is particularly the case in Egypt, because those who, you know, started the revolution were not interested in seizing political power. Were not interested 
in becoming the government. You no, know, they wanted to change the government of Hosni Mubarak, but you know, they um, interested other people to run the country, hoping that those other, other people uh, would promote the ideas of the uh, revolution. So this distinction between old and the um, new social movements, I think, is um, uh, important now. Um, uh, the old social movement uh, is made up of the Islamists. I talked about them. The new uh, social movements, as I said, is made up of uh, human rights groups, uh, um, Kifaya, which uh, is a movement that started in 2004, uh, which calls for, you know, which uh, uh, was opposed to uh, an extension of the presidential term of President Barak, and was opposed also to family succession. The President Barak would leave power to his uh, son. Um, Another example of new social movement is the um, uh, 9 March movement, March 9th movement, uh, which is a movement among university professors uh, calling for the uh, independence <coughs> of the university from the intervention by security forces and excessive intervention by the government. Uh, another example of the um, new social movement is the movement of independent trade unions. You know, uh, workers are trying to establish trade unions uh, which are not uh, under the control of the uh, Egyptian Federation of Trade Unions, uh, heavily controlled by the government. So these are <coughs> the new uh, social movements. Now, what are the differences between the old social movements and the new ones? First of all, history. The old social uh, movement, uh, you know, um, has been present uh, <coughs> for almost eight decades. Uh, you know, one component of the movement, the, um, of, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, was established in 1928. Uh, another component of the movement, the Salafists, uh, had their own you know, associations for many uh, decades. Uh, the new movements, you know, the oldest of them, you know, go back to uh, human rights organizations, uh, go back to the 1980s. But most of the movements which were active in the evolution are perhaps Kifaya, is um, eight years old, the other movement you know, came into being during the last uh, two years. Uh, um, also in terms of social background, the old uh, social movements, the Islamists, are polyclass in uh, uh, social uh, background. So you find you know, uh, middle class people, you find the poor people, and you find also businessmen. Uh, so you find people of all the social uh, backgrounds uh, in the Islamist uh, movement. Uh, uh, but the uh, new social movements, uh, to the contrary, mostly they are made up of middle class uh, people. Also in terms of um, ideology, the old social uh, movements uh, call for the establishment of an Islamic society, you know, a society guided by principles of uh, Islamic Sharia. They might have their internal differences, uh, but anyway, you know, the idea of the old uh, social movements uh, is a restoration of a kind of society, system, etc., which is guided by the teachings of Islam, no matter how these teachings are interpreted. The new social movements are mostly secular. They don't like to call themselves secular, because I don't know the situation in the Philippines, but the word uh, secular is misinterpreted in Egypt. A secular person is understood to be atheist. So therefore, you know, no one tries to use the term, you know, secular. The term which is used, you know, civil. Uh, so we call for civil state. You know, civil state does not mean anything in political science. But what is meant by civil state? Uh, state where religion and politics are uh, separated. Uh, you know, official, of course, you know, religion and politics are intertwined. You know, one cannot, you know, uh, eliminate the influence of religion in politics. Uh, even, I don't, I don't like to... Uh, consider the U.S. as, you know, a model, but the U.S. is definitely, you know, the most advanced, you know, I don't know, technologically and economically most advanced country, but the region is very important in U.S. politics, uh, but, you know, um, uh, at least, you know, uh, formally there should be this kind of um, uh, separation. So the all social movements, you know, are uh, committed uh, to promote and understand society. The new social movements, uh, you know, they are not against the religion, but they are for separation of religion and uh, politics. And 
in terms of political resources, and the old uh, social movements uh, have plenty of political resources in terms of membership, you know, the uh, uh, member of the associations which belong to the old uh, social movements uh, are you know, hundreds or thousands. Uh, in terms of sympathizers, uh, you could say you know, simply that during the last election, uh, no less than you know, 12 million people voted for Islam's candidates. Uh, so you know, they have large membership, uh, large number of sympathizers, uh, and if you have a large uh, membership uh, and polyclass structure, uh, you have no problem getting money. You can uh, mobilize funds, uh, getting small contributions you know, from members, uh, you can mobilize funds also by getting, you know, donations uh, from uh, wealthy people. You can, you know, earn more money by using, you know, whatever you get in economic enterprises. Uh, also, the old social movements now uh, run daily newspapers. So the Muslim Brothers uh, run a daily newspaper. The Salafists that talk about them also run a daily newspaper. They have TV stations. Uh, so, in terms of whatever you can think of, uh, in terms of political resources, uh, the old uh, social uh, movements uh, definitely are better endowed uh, than the new uh, uh, social forces. Uh, the, what the new social forces have is you know, access to the internet, which is you know, not be underestimated, very important, uh, and they believe that they can mobilize people, they can work on numbers. Uh, they succeeded on the 25th of January to bring, you know, later on, not on the 25th of January, but during the days of the revolution, they succeeded in getting millions of people to the streets. Uh, so they count very much on the fact that through their work, they can mobilize, you know, numbers. They can mobilize large numbers of people. Whether this can be an event, uh, this is the big question. Uh, whether what happened on the 25th of January 2011 happened again on the 25th of January 2012, this is the big question. Uh, so, you know, if there would be any balance between these two forces, it depends very much on the capacity of the new social movements, which are, you know, in terms of numbers, you know, very small, with the exception of the Facebook groups, which have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, but they cannot be compared to the resources that the old social movement has. But, you know, the future of it will depend on how successful the new social movements are in mobilizing numbers, in mobilizing large numbers of people. Methods of action, the old uh, social movements, uh, you know, can use a variety of methods of action. Uh, they can use, you know, political action, um, they have political parties, uh, they can um, uh, use, you know, in general, you know, peaceful methods, uh, they can cooperate with trade unions, um, and at a certain moment, uh, some of them resorted to armed struggle. So one component of the old social movements are the militant groups who took up arms, arms against the government in the 1980s and the 1990s. You know, members of some of these groups assassinated President Arnold Sadat on the 6th of October 1981. And they you know, launched an armed rebellion against the government, which continued until 1997. So also, in the past, the Muslim Brothers, which are a component of the old uh, social movements uh, did resort to assassination. Uh, the members of the organization assassinated the senior judge, the senior police officer, the prime minister. So, you know, uh, they have a variety of methods they can resort to. The new social uh, movements, uh, what they can do is to call for protest action. They don't have newspapers, uh, you know, but they can always call for protest action. Uh, such as you know, occupying the Tahrir Square, organizing strikes and uh, demonstrations. If I look uh, in some detail at the old movement, uh, you know, uh, and this is important uh, because um, you know I call it the old movement, but it's not quite homogeneous, so it lacks homogeneity. Uh, the most important component of the old uh, social movement is the Muslim Brothers, which is an organization you know, established by Hassan al-Banna in 1928 and it had a long experience. In the beginning, it was completely opposed to the party system because, you know, it's fair to say that they are, you know, with Allah. And Allah, you know, those who are on the side of Allah 
have all the power. And those who are not on the side of Allah, you know, are zero. So if they were going to establish a quinta party, they would be zero. But if they are united or on the side of Allah, they have everything. So for many, many years, they did not want to transform this organization into a political party. This is, you know, very um, uh, important uh, because, you know, the Egyptian laws and president ban any uh, association, uh, any civil association to practice politics. Uh, but they are a civil association. So how could they, you know, exercise politics? So only lately, you know, since 1984, they started to be uh, actively involved in elections. And, you know, recently they have established a political party called the uh, Freedom and Justice Party. And they are planning then to introduce into the um, People's Assembly a new law on, you know, citizens' associations. Uh, a new law that would take into consideration the particular nature of the Muslim Brotherhood as an association. So it is an association uh, which is um, focusing on propagating uh, uh, the call for Islamic Sharia. And in this way, it can use many methods, including establishing a political party. So in this way, you know, this, this ban on you know, um, citizen associations to be involved in politics uh, would be lifted there. Um, so, you know, and it remained as an organization like this for you know, many years. But even under the monarchy for 1952, you know, it had problems with the uh, government, as I told you. It uh, resorted to assassination, and uh, in fact, it did assassinate the Prime Minister of Egypt. So, under the monarchy, the Muslim Brotherhood was outlawed, was banned. Uh, but later on, because you know, Egypt during those years, uh, you know, it was engaged in the struggle for independence. And the party that was leading the struggle for independence was called the Wafd Party. Uh, and the king, in order to balance the influence of this party, uh, allowed the Brotherhood to come back. Well, so it was very important. It was outlawed under the monarchy, but was restored as part of a political game between the king of Egypt and the majority party known as the Off Party. And after the revolution of 1952, you know, the, uh, in the beginning, you know, the, I would say that the history between uh, the Brotherhood, the history between all these you know, components of the Islamic uh, movements, uh, the relations with the government was usually one of, you know, confrontation and cooperation. So there were periods of cooperation with the government and then periods of um, confrontation with the government. So for the Muslim Brotherhood, after, in fact, they were informed, the Muslim Brothers were informed of the date of the coup d'etat that started the revolution of 1952. The revolution of 1952 Egypt started as a military coup d'etat. A number of army officers overthrew the monarchy. But later on, they introduced far-reaching socio-economic changes in the capital. So technically speaking, it started as a coup d'etat. But later on, because of the radical nature of the reforms, the, of the measures they introduced, it became a revolution. So this coup d'etat, the date of the coup d'etat was told, or the, the Muslim brothers were informed that the date of the coup d'etat, just one day. And you know this is you know, very crucial. You know, if you are going to overthrow the government, you don't tell anyone that you are going to do it in 24 hours. And if you trust this person, right? so that was the kind of you know, trust that the free officers had in the Muslim Brotherhood. So in the beginning, there was you know, this kind of operation. But the, the Muslim Brothers side, I think, you know, they are accused of you know, trying to monopolize power. Anyway, you know, the field of operation in the beginning, you know, which was um, manifested uh, in the appointment of ministers came from the Muslim Brothers, uh, appointment of prominent uh, leaders of the Brotherhood as, you know, um, uh, in charge of the uh, important uh, activities uh, of the new mass organization established by three officers. And, you know, for your knowledge, one of the people, one of the members of the Muslim Brotherhood who cooperated closely with the free officers is known, was known as Sayyid Qutb. Sayyid Qutb is very important because you know, this Sayyid Qutb was not only you know, a member of the Brotherhood of Jews, you know, a very well read intellectual, was literary critic, and you know, 
that he cooperated with the three officers, eh? but later on, when relations deteriorated between the three officers and the Muslim brothers, he was in prison, spent some time in prison, and during the prison years, eh, he became very radical. Eh? And he wrote you know, several books, eh? you know, recommending you know, armed struggle as a way of establishing an Islamic system. And for this reason, you know, he was associated with another conspiracy to assassinate the Malah Abdel Nasser, the ruler of Egypt, and was executed. But his books became, you know, um, the guide books for militant Islam. The militant Islamists are called beasts. They are inspired by the work of Said Qutb, who, uh, I think, I established a sort of parallel between his thought and that of Che Guevara, which was, you know, about Che Guevara, and, you know, the idea of Foucault. Foucault, this is, you know, the place where, you know, the revolutionaries would go and, you know, train and prepare to liberate the country. Yeah? Uh, this happened in the history of China, happened in the his history of Cuba, you know, the uh, Sierra Maestra mountains in China, I think, you know, after the um, Long March, I think, um, Yunnan, I don't remember, the way province of China where Mao Zedong took the um, Chinese Communist Party and prepared to go back and, you know, liberate the whole of China. So, second, we had a similar idea that those who are going to establish a Muslim society should, you know, leave society for some time in order to assimilate the teachings of Islam. Once they have assimilated the teachings of Islam, they come back to society in order to liberate them. The same idea as, you know, Foucault or Foucault. And so, you know, and they should not spare any method in order to liberate society, because the Muslim societies have strayed away, have deviated them from the two teachings of Islam. So, you know, this was said, cooperated with the three officers, and later on, you know, wrote these books, which were, you know, the textbooks of radical Islam. So, Muslim brothers went through a period of cooperation with army officers, and then later on, disagreed with them and were accused of planning to assassinate Nasser in 1954, 1965. So the organization was outlawed definitively in 1954. So legally speaking, now, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood is a legal organization. But, you know, after the revolution of 19, uh, 2011, you know, no one is talking about it. In fact, it opened, uh, the leaders of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood opened the new headquarters in Cairo, and they invited leaders of political parties, you know, senior members of the government to come to, you know, participate with them in the celebration of new headquarters of the Muslim Brotherhood. Although still legally, it is still legally, it is a bad organization, but, you know, no one cares about the law in this uh, situation. So, the relations with the government were usually characterized by periods of uh, cooperation, leading to confrontation uh, later on. But the uh, important thing about the Muslim Brothers, uh, their version of Islam is, or their version of the restoration of an Islamic society is a gradual one. They don't insist that, you know, teachings of Sharia should be applied immediately. Uh, and they uh, believe that uh, uh, Egyptian Muslims, or Muslims in general, are good people. If you tell them the right interpretation of Islam, they will accept it and they will act on it. So there is no reason to force them to adopt these teachings. Uh, you know, if you, you know, persuade them that you know, their understanding of Islam is not the right one, and you tell them what the right interpretation of Islam is, they will accept it. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, uh, what, uh, the organization should focus uh, on educating people. This will take time. They don't mind because they realize that at the end, uh, the majority of people will support them. And they have shown a large degree of flexibility in their positions. As I told you, they are accused by their opponents of having cooperated with the king against the national government, having even established contacts with the British occupation forces against the nationalist movement. Now they are accused of you know, being in collusion with the military council that is running the country. So at a certain moment also, they will oppose this military council. So they are very flexible in their political position. They are very different from the Salafists. The Salafists, this is the second component of the Islamist movement. The Muslim Brothers, 
were you know, engaged in politics, although they did not constitute a political party before the revolution. They said people who fight against the Israelis in 1948, except that he was in They said people who fight British occupation uh, forces, uh, you know, they were calling for, you know, a new political system. Uh, so they were engaged in politics, uh, although they did not form a political party. The Salafists were not engaged in politics at all. They had their own associations, which were very active in the country, particularly in poor areas. But before the revolution of 2011, they were not uh, active in politics. In fact, uh, they were uh, suspected uh, by the liberals and the leftists that uh, they were used by the government of Prosti Mubarak against the Muslim Brothers. Uh, but the Muslim Brothers are interested in politics. Uh, that Salafists you know, promote a version of Islam which is apolitical. It's not, you know, uh, concerned about the politics. And in fact, during the revolution, some of their uh, spokespersons uh, spoke against the revolution, saying that, you know, in Islam, you know, rebellion against the Muslim ruler is sedition, fitna in Arabic. So this will bring, you know, disaster to the fight. So therefore, rebellion against the ruler is un-Islamic. However, you know, later on, you know, when they saw that the revolution was succeeded, they participated in it. And they formed uh, political parties. Now, the Salafists are different from the Muslim brothers because their approach is not to grab they would not like to wait, you know, decades until Egyptians are convinced of the true interpretation of Islam and start to act on it. They would like, you know, to you know, start to apply the rules of Islam Sharia immediately. And <clears throat> just to show how flexible the Muslim brothers are and how inflexible the Salafists are. The Muslim brothers in their party the deputy president of the party is a Christian. You know, most of the Christians in Egypt are Orthodox Christians. They did not find an Orthodox Christian, but they found, I think, a Protestant, uh, who is the vice president of their party. So uh, they present themselves as, you know, people who are not just tolerant, but they say that the best guarantee for the rights of the, the Christians in Egypt is to have an Islamic government. Uh, because Islam, you know, does not uh, recognize in fact, uh, Christianity and Judaism. Uh, so they s say that the best uh, protection uh, for the rights of Christians in Egypt uh, is to have an Islamic government. And they try to demonstrate this by having vice president of the party as Christian. I think they have also some talks on the list of their candidates in uh, elections. Uh, but one last example, just to show the difference between the two, is that, you know, in celebrating the uh, Orthodox Christmas on the 7th of January, leaders of the Muslim Brothers went to the Coptic Pope in Egypt to congratulate him, to express their best wishes on the occasion of the uh, Christmas. The uh, Salafists, on their part, uh, some of them issued a fatwa that it was not compatible with teachings of Islam for any Muslim to exchange greetings with a non Muslim. So, oh, as a Muslim, I should not say good morning to a non Muslim. Eh? And, you know, uh, they, they were invited to take part in the celebration of Christmas. Eh? They did not go. You know, the brother of the leader went, eh? but it was said that he did not represent their uh, party. Eh? Just another example to show how, um, you know, uh, conservative they are. The Muslim brothers do not mind you know, having women you know, among their candidates. Eh? The Egyptian uh, electoral law requires all political parties uh, to have uh, women on their lists. So the Muslim brothers, you know, uh, accepted this, and they had women on their lists. And they showed storm in elections. You have to see the photo of the candidate. Uh, the uh, Salafists uh, had also they had to have women candidates, uh, but they would not show their photos. You know, they would put a flower. <laughs> Just for seeing that they have women of their candidates and they call for the adoption of Islamic code of dress. So these are two components of the Islamic school. The third component is made up of former militant groups, you know, groups that you know took up arms against the government in during the 1980s and the 1990s. 
but now they have abandoned armed struggle. They are willing to abide by the rules of a peaceful uh, political uh, process. Uh, so they join the political uh, process. There you know, are two main groups. One, the largest one, was known as the Islamic group, and the small one is known as the Jihad organization. Just to link this to what you know, the Jihad organization is the organization of Ayman al zawahir you know, the successor to Osama bin Laden. He came out of this you know, small group. The two groups are both cooperated together in order to assassinate President Saddam in 1981. But those who remained in Egypt are committed to peaceful political action. And they claim that they are closer to the Muslim brothers, although they had an electoral alliance with the Salafists. Now, the new movements, you know, I gave you example, human rights organizations, you know, we have, you know, we have certain tens of human rights organizations in the country, the most important of which is the Egyptian Organization for Human Rights, but one organization in particular called the uh, Isha Mubarak <coughs> Center for Human Rights was quite active among workers and it paid the price of its support for the revolution. It was invaded by uh, security forces. <clears throat> Another movement is Kifaya, and talked uh, about it, uh, which called for the um, uh, opposition to the fifth term of President Barak. This was uh, 2004, and of course to the family uh, succession by his son. March 9th movement is a movement of university professors calling for the autonomy of universities. Every sixth movement this is a movement. This is a movement of uh, young people. Uh, uh, it called for uh, general strike in 2008. At that time, there was a strike of the textile workers in the Delta, the northern part of Egypt, the city called Mahalla al Kobra. So the April 6th movement called for you know, all people in the country to join the workers of Mahalla al Kobra and you know, to engage in a general strike. Uh, that what happened. But this was quite alarming to the uh, uh, security forces. So there was a tense situation in Egypt, you know, at that moment. And April 6th movement is quite active. And, you know, the government accuses uh, April 6th movement of being, uh, I don't know, in contact with foreign forces who are not interested in the um, stability uh, of the country. And then there are independent trade unions. Um, the Egyptian law, in fact, banned uh, the establishment of trade unions, uh, which are not affiliated uh, to the uh, Official uh, general situation of trade unions of Egypt. But, you know, some workers, uh, some militants uh, believe that you know the right, uh, the freedom of association should not be limited. And therefore, they started to establish trade unions uh, um, away from uh, which don't belong to this uh, uh, official federation. And they succeeded in getting recognition for these you know uh, independent trade unions. And finally, there are the Facebook groups uh, which. Uh, became, you know, quite common. The most important of uh, these Facebook groups uh, is one called We Are All Khalid Saeed. Khalid Saeed is a young man who was, you know, um, I think uh, sending a message through the internet uh, denouncing police brutality. And while he was sending these messages uh, in an internet cafe, was arrested by, you know, policemen and was tortured to death. The government did not realize, did not recognize that he was tortured to death by policemen and claimed that he was a drug trafficker, was an unemployed person, was a bad person, avoided the military service, so he had you know, all the bad things in the world were you know, concentrated in him. And you know, he tried to resist you know, policemen who acted in a civilized manner but he had a big piece of my mind in his mouth. And when you know, a policeman tried to get uh, this you know, piece of my one, he swallowed it and died. That was the story of the government. But you know, there were photos on the internet of you know, misfortune case. And this was known throughout the country. So there was an outrage against police brutality. So you know, a certain young man, his name is Wael Munim, established this face. Group. 
we are all khalifai, we are all subject to we could be all victims of police brutality, so we should oppose this. And he called for, you know, marches or you know, uh, asylum gatherings in order to protest against the torture of the Khalifa. And this Facebook group, you know, just before the revolution had, you know, uh, I don't know, something like 600,000 persons, uh, you know, members of this Facebook group. And there are, you know, other groups, but this is the most uh, important. Uh, the government, uh, uh, the internet, you know, allowed uh, Facebook groups, uh, first of all, to uh, provide people with the right information. So, uh, in fact, I knew myself about, you know, what happened to al Saida through the internet. And, you know, the internet was telling, we were telling the story, uh, the internet, uh, the, uh, through Twitter and Facebook, were telling the story, and, you know, now newspapers were telling another story. So, the internet was used in order to disseminate, you know, an alternative, to provide an alternative source of information. Also, the internet was used in order to coordinate, you know, uh, revolutionary activities. And uh, there is an interesting story that, uh, you know, uh, of course, the internet provided, you know, the militants uh, with a way of communication uh, which was not subject to government uh, censorship. Uh, even the administrators of uh, these, you know, internet uh, uh, groups uh, did not know each other. Uh, but they used the internet in order to coordinate their activities. So there is a story that, you know, while in Monet, who, you know, uh, 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 ran this, you know, Facebook group, uh, was sitting in an internet cafe, coordinating activities with another person, who was sitting in the same internet cafe. <laughs> and they did not know each other. <laughs> it was only later on that they discovered that they were in, in the same, you know, uh, internet cafe coordinating in the revolution. And they, in fact, benefited from the experience of Kifai. I can tell you about the experience of Kifai because I was a member of Kifai. I was a member of the Secretariat of Kifai. Now, Kifai would call on the people, you know, to demonstrate against the government. And Kifai was the first to say that if one million people come to the Free Square, you know, and shout against the government, the government would fall. But it never succeeded in mobilizing more than 7,000 people in a demonstration. So there was always this dream of one million persons uh, demonstration, but you know, it failed. It failed because it was doing, you know, all, all the time the same thing. Yeah? You know, it would uh, go and organize a demonstration on the uh, steps, you know, of the um, uh, on the staircase of the uh, uh, German syndicate in Cairo. The German syndicate is located in downtown Cairo, and the German syndicate is was run by a international councillor which included people of different uh, political views. So therefore, you know, it was sympathetic uh, to protest activities. Uh. So members of Kifaya, what they will do, they will decide, you know, I will go to a meeting and we decide to organize a protest. And, you know, someone also gets, let us go to the general syndicate and organize a protest there. And I would say, why don't we go to another place? You know, at the moment I suggested that we go to the central railway station in Cairo. Which is very important if you organize a protest, even you know 30 persons you know in the central railway station of Cairo, just in a few hours the whole country would know about it then. because you know hundreds of thousands of people use the trains you know to go to all parts of the country and the police would never suspect that the protest action would be organized there but you know leaders of Cairo would insist on you know doing the same thing in the same place uh, all the time so um, uh, the uh, militant groups which uh, organized the uh, <coughs> for the on the 25th of January, decided to do something else. And instead of starting at the center, they would start at the periphery. So instead of going to the German syndicate in downtown Cairo, or you know, starting at the Tahrir Square, you would start, in fact, the demonstrations in four districts of Cairo. And then they would converge to the Tahrir uh, Square. And uh, of course, that was not expected. Uh, by the uh, security forces. But also when they start in four districts, they thought that they would get large numbers of people. And while they are you know, marching uh, from these you know, four districts to the place where more people who joined them. Uh, so they benefited, in fact, from the experience of the uh, and they were uh, successful. These groups are not united by one ideology. There is no one ideology uniting these uh, groups. But still they share you know, certain ideas. Uh, but the idea is not, you know, articulated. There is no you 
you know, book explaining you know the ideology of these books. But one could you know discern this you know common idea that by examining them, the slogans of the revolution, the slogans of the revolution were you know, bread, liberty, social justice. Bread means you know satisfying the basic needs of the people. Liberty means you know freedom from you know freedom to exercise all civil and political rights. Social justice, you know, means that there should not be, you know, white gap in the distribution of, you know, uh, income, and wealth, and uh, political power. So you could say that they are, you know, liberal leftists. Uh, you know, they believe in some sort of social democracy where people, you know, enjoy, uh, you know, civil and political rights, and they are guaranteed also satisfaction of basic human needs, and they are free from, you know, uh, police uh, brutality. So these are the ideas, but they are not you know, articulated. You, know, you could, could not say that they believe in socialism, communism, anarchism. No, they believe in these you know, broad strokes. Different from the uh, Islamists who you know, have many books you know, explaining uh, what Islam uh, means. Now, what the, are the points of agreement and disagreement among these forces? Uh, apart from certain Salafists, you know, uh, uh, all these groups were united. Uh, you know, in the Tahrir Square. And the Muslim Brothers did not join from the beginning. But uh, uh, certain young people of the Muslim Brothers would join the uh, demonstrations in the Tahrir Square. And they succeeded in convincing uh, the leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood to join him. So the Muslim Brothers were not there from the beginning. No, the Salafists. Uh, you know, the revolution, as I said, was, you know, initiated by the new uh, social uh, movements. Uh, the old social movements, you know, came uh, later on. So at this certain moment, between the 25th of January and the 11th of February, they became united in the determination uh, to get rid of the regime of Hosni Mubarak. But, you know, after, you know, uh, Mubarak was, you know, uh, sent away, uh, you know, these agreements, you know, started. Uh, and, you know, the differences uh, ran through the major issues between the old social movement and the new uh, social movements. One point of this agreement was the base of transition to civilian rule. Now, interesting enough, those who were in favor of uh, starting the revolution, the new social groups uh, were not in favor of, you know, a uh, brief transition period. Uh, were not in favor of a short period of transition. But the transition would end in the uh, election of the Constituent Assembly and the election of each nation and President of the Republic. So the new groups, you know, being limited to middle class people, having no organizations throughout the country, relying just mostly on the internet, which is used by you know, educated people, young educated people, who constitute still a minority in the country. So they were not sure that they would win elections. So therefore, they were not interested in a brief transitional period. The Islamist, the old uh, social movement, uh, was interested in immediate transfer of power. But they were sure, you know, with their you know, vast membership, with the large number of people who sympathize with them, they would win any election. So the uh, duration of the transition period was, you know, uh, a question of protection between these uh, two groups and then the modalities of the transition, how we would go about the transition. Should we uh, amend the constitution or should we adopt a new uh, constitution? Uh, those who were, uh, the new social movements were in favor of adopting a new constitution. The uh, old social movements were interested in amending the old constitution and then, you know, going to uh, election. Why? Because, you know, those who are in favor of uh, uh, starting with the new constitution uh, believe that in order to establish a new political system, we should agree on the rules. Um, and that these rules uh, should be the object of a consensus. Uh, if we go to elections first, uh, the elections would be won by uh, certain groups uh, who, in this case, you know, if they draft the constitution later on, the constitution would reflect the point of view of these uh, groups, uh, but would not, you know, uh, be the object of consensus. Uh, 
and you know we had a referendum, and the referendum people were asked, do you prefer that we just amend the constitution, or we go about uh, you know a new constitution? And the majority of people, 78 percent of the people, were in favor of amending the constitution, because anyway you know later on you know a new constitution will be appointed. The, the nature of the constitution should the constitution be an Islamic constitution? or it should be a secular constitution. And the difference is focused on Article 2 of the Constitution, which calls for teachings, you know, principles of Islamic Sharia are the uh, base, the uh, principal source of legislation. There were two problems about this, uh, this article, you know, the Islam should say, the article should not refer to principles of Islamic Sharia, it should refer to Islamic Sharia, not principles of Islamic Sharia, but the principles of Islamic Sharia are General, you know, they are not different from the principles of any legal uh, doctrine. Secondly, you know, the Salafists in particular would say that the uh, Sharia should be Sharia, not principles of Islamic Sharia. The sharia should be the first source of legislation. So when the legislature is about to draft a new law, it should look at you know the holy texts. Eh? So it should be the first source of legislation. So this is the nature of the constitution. Uh, and then the position versus the military council. In general, the old social movements were in favor of the military council. They supported the military council almost all the time. You know, there were some differences, but you know, in general, uh, they were quite supportive of the military council. The new social movements uh, were critical of the military council. They thought that the military council was reinstating Mubarak's regime without Mubarak. They did not do anything. It took time before putting Mubarak on trial, allowed senior officials of Mubarak regime to continue to do their job, you know, etc. Um, uh, you know, it changed almost uh, nothing. So uh, there were these differences on the position for the military council. And then, you know, what about the revolution? The new groups were in favor of continuing the revolution. The revolution has not ended. The revolution should continue. The uh, old social movements uh, were in favor of you know, organizing elections, you know, having the government, and this will be the end of the revolution. Since we have free and fair elections, uh, then the revolution has been uh, successful. And finally, methods of political action. Uh, the old social movements prefer going through elections, you know, forming political parties, etc. The new social movements, you know, are interested in uh, um, use mostly protest action because they believe that until now. You know, they don't have the majority in the country, so only through protest action, they would achieve, in fact, what people want. In fact, what they uh, ask for are the same demands of the people. But, you know, um, they go about it through protest action. And the majority of people, in fact, are against protest action, protest action because protest actions do destabilize the economy. Now, you know, um, you know uh, what is the situation now? We have elections, and the old social movements, you know, got the majority of these uh, elections. And most probably, they will uh, decide what kind of constitution in the uh, future and what sort of government. What does this mean for democracy? First of all, there are these ideological differences you know, between the old social movements and the new social movements. The, uh, some members of the old social movements are against you know, equality of, and against the principle of citizenship which means you know, equal rights for uh, everybody. They do not see that you know, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims should have the same uh, rights. I give examples so, of this. Uh, so uh, these are important differences. Uh, what does democracy mean uh, if you know, some people in power uh, do not believe in the principle of uh, citizenship? Secondly, also, democracy means balancing relationships, uh, uh, balancing uh, power. Uh, that you know, there is uh, that if there is one party which has one group, one ideological thing which has you know 60 percent or 75 percent of the people behind it, then this uh, would be tempting uh, to this party or to this group uh, to you know exercise authoritarian methods of ruling. So I think democracy requires you know balanced uh, relationships. You now these balanced relationships don't exist. And finally, you know, uh, the new groups insist on maintaining protest action uh, until the goals of the revolution are uh, achieved. Uh, and the, the old social movements uh, think that this is quite destabilizing for the economy. But the new social groups are not going to be satisfied with what has been achieved. So if the old social movements in power 
to all the seat in improving the condition of the people, this would be the chance for the new social groups to come up again. And this would be, you know, threatening to political instability. Okay. I stop here. Thank you very much.